You are listening to Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. Welcome. So in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our listeners, uh, but we do an introductory portion. This is where we talk about um, current events, our lives. We mention our sponsors. In today's episode, the intro portion was about 38 minutes long. After that, we answer the fitness questions. So let me give you a rundown of the whole episode. We open up by talking about my first night with my new baby son, Aurelius. Ah, it's good times to not sleep at all. Yeah. Uh, then we talk about uh, Adam's little boy, Max, now exhibiting frustration and anger, which uh, Adam thinks it's hilarious, which it's, it is funny when they're little. It is when N they go, mm. yeah, Not funny when they get older. I talk about now relying on pre-workout to be able to work out in the morning. By the way, Mind Pump has a pre-workout now it partnered with Legion. Make sure you go check it out. It's good stuff. Uh, then we talked about the war on drugs and how drugs has won. Uh, now, after this election, uh, Oregon decriminalized drugs. all drugs and a lot of other stuff happens. So congratulations, drugs. You won yeah. the war. Then we talk about studies on psilocybin. Apparently, it's far more effective, according to some of these studies, at treating depression. This is kind of interesting. Then we talk about Thanksgiving. It's coming. It's having. We're going to have a great time. Justin likes going to his in-laws more than his family's uh, for <laughs> Thanksgiving. You're just going to put that out like, just like that. My bad. Thanks. Um, also, by the way, we work with a company called Butcher Box that delivers grass-fed meat to your door, but right now they will give you a free turkey. So if you sign up for Butcher Box, you get grass-fed meats delivered to your door, and you'll get a free turkey just in time for Thanksgiving. If you want to do that, you got to use the Mind Pump discount. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash Mind Pump. Then we talk about a show on Netflix, uh, some new ancient Egypt discoveries. We talk about Burger King uh, promoting other fast food restaurants. Strange advertising uh, might actually work, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about or ask Justin about his creative process. He's been making funny commercials soon to be released. They're Can't hilarious. Wait to show you guys. And I have no idea how he comes up with the ideas. Then I talk about a study on compression clothing and it's in, how it improves muscle building and performance. This is kind of weird. Um, and then finally, we talk about Mir, a company that makes some of the best water bottles and coffee mugs and insulated products. New colors are out. Uh, you actually get a discount, by the way, through Mind Pump. If you go to mir.com forward slash Mind Pump, that's Mir, M-I-I-R.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump, and you'll get 25% off all their stuff. That was the intro. Then we get into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person's asking if you can use suspension movements in place of focus or trigger sessions. So in some of our programs, we've put in what are called focus or trigger sessions. These are lower intensity workouts that you do on your rest days, actually speeds up recovery and sends another muscle building signal. You can use suspension exercises for that as well. By the way, uh, we have a program called MAPS Suspension if you're looking for a full suspension-based workout without having to go to the gym. In fact, listen to the, the end of the episode, or excuse me, the end of this intro. I'll give you guys a, a massive discount. The next question, this person says, uh, what are the qualifying markers uh, that will determine whether or not you're an intermediate lifter? So there's beginner, intermediate, advanced. How do you know which one you're at? And the third question, what are five staple foods to incorporate into your diet that will help you cover most of your nutritional needs? And then the final question, this person wants to know how to help uh, with people who have body dysmorphia. Very, very common in the fitness industry and relatively common among people who are looking to work out. So an important part of the episode. Make sure you listen to that one. Um, and then here's the part where I give you the crazy discount. So we are in November, holiday season. Here's what we did. We created the ultimate at-home workout bundle. Okay, so we took... MAPS Anywhere, which is a full body workout program that only uses resistance bands, your body weight, and a broomstick. So you don't need any gym equipment at all for incredible muscle building and fat burning results. We also have MAPS Suspension. This is a suspension trainer program. So those are the things you hook over your door. You do body weight exercises. It's a lot of tension. You build lots of muscle. With suspension trainers, you can train if you're very advanced just by changing the angle, making the exercise very difficult. Or if you're a beginner, you can change the angle and make it a lot easier. Both programs together in our ultimate at-home bundle, $99.99. That's it. One-time payment. Oh, also, we're throwing in one more program, MAPS HIT. So MAPS HIT is high-intensity interval training. It's a fat-burning uh, focus program. So this is designed to burn 
a tremendous amount of calories in a short 20 or 30 minute workout. Um, this one also is suitable for at home workouts. So you get all three programs. All three programs normally would retail for $291. Right now, get all three of them for $99. 99 cents. That's it. One time payment. By the way, they all come with a 30 day money back guarantee. Just go to mapsnovember.com to sign up. Again, that's maps, M A P S, November.com. How was uh, night number one oh. with your son home, huh? Everybody's home now, yeah? There's one word to describe when you have a new baby, mm. one word that describes it perfectly mm. blur. Oh, the blur, yeah, yeah. It's, you know that I mean? covers it. Yeah. You're just it covers it for about six months too. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pretty much. Bro, you gotta <laughs> stop. <laughs> just go listen. <Stop. laughs> no, he um he's like cluster feeding right now. So he that's and, good though, and it happens at night. That's good. So she's trying to sleep, and he's just he's just glued to her boob. Dude, there's this thing he does. It cracks me up. <laughs> My son used to do it too. If he's close to her boob, especially mm-hmm. her nipple, he turns into a little creature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's like searching for it. Yeah. So we're like, you know, we're both cracking up and That's watching it. I messed up uh, uh, yesterday, by the way, talk, oh, no. telling about the birth story. Well, when I came in, I was in such a, I, I was in this state of like, I just came from the hospital. Everything's like, ah. you're bringing a lot of adrenaline in. Yeah. So she listened to it and she's like, she's like, dude, you're so wrong. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, <laughs> The contractions weren't two minutes apart. They were like 30 seconds apart. And, you know, I'm such a guy. I'm like, what's the difference? (laughs) (laughs) A lifetime. That's all. A lifetime. That's all. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's. Wow, they were 30 seconds apart. Yeah, it got real intense, dude. Holy smokes. It got real. The whole situation was. Yeah, if I was her, I'd say some shit, too, then. Yeah, no, she's totally (laughs) justified. Because when you're doing 30 seconds, that's like uh, 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 two minutes is a lifetime. Bro, (laughs) do do bicep curls, 30 second rest for six hours. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to puke. Imagine it. You know, wow. I love how we're comparing it to bicep curls. Well, I'm yeah. saying it's, it's perfect. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying bicep yeah. curls is easy. Yeah. I couldn't even do that. Hey, this guy digging himself yeah, in no, the grave. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> just keep going, bro. Damn, I like dude, it. I keep, we, we better move along from I keep, this one. I keep, <laughs> I keep fucking up. You know, it's a funny too when we were in the in the hospital, and you know they have that there's just shitty beds for the dads to sleep in, right? It's like a it's like a it's it, they say it's a bed. It's not a bed, dude. No. It's two levels. Your freaking low back is it's this like way. The worst upper. futon ever. It's oh. terrible, right? Yeah. So the, the I remember that the nurse comes in and she's like, you know, oh, you know, how how's the bed and how are you sleeping? And you want to be honest, <laughs> but hell no, I ain't gonna complain because right. my, my wife is right, in the bed right, next right. to you me. Wanna, you want to be that guy? Yeah. So like, oh, it's great. Yeah, you got no room to complain. <laughs> so nice. about like a five star hotel here for at least another year. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like such a pussy. I can't say I know, anything, yeah, yeah. anything at all. No, it's it's dude, it's. It's amazing, man. I, so my kids met the baby for the first time. Yeah, how was that? Oh, dude, they we recorded it. Not so afraid they, to hold him or anything like that. My son, a little more. You know, he's a fifteen-year-old boy. Of and you know how it is with infants. They're. Yeah. I remember when my son was born. So he's, he's my first. I remember feeling like he was made out of like you know, like he was made out of glass. I could barely move him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt him. And then I remember the nurses coming in. To like change his diaper or swaddle and him, flopping around. Yeah, so. dude, and they're like, he's more durable than you than you think. And I remember being like blown away by that. So my son, he's like afraid to like. I'm like, do you want to hold him? He's like, no. I'm like, you can hold him. It's all you know. He's kind of afraid, and he'll be a little bit more, I think, involved as as the baby gets uh, older. But my daughter, she's she's her m- little mommy instincts kicked in right away. She's oh, wow. she went in his room. Isn't she's, that interesting how little girls sometimes are like that, right? Dude, right, right away. Dude, right away. She went in his room. She's picking out outfits for him. <laughs> she's like just watching him. Oh my God, I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to do that. She's like, and I take my kids when they're with us. I, I make them do a lot of walks because they're so sedentary because school is, you know, it's remote learning. And so we do these structured walks and workouts, which and you know, I'll get them to go outside, and it seems like sometimes it's a pain in the ass, right? Mm-hmm. Trying to get them to move. She's like, "I'll walk every day so long as we take the baby. I don't care. I'll walk five times a day. I don't even care." Oh, wow, she's all motivated. Yeah, right and now. then when they went back to their mom's last night, uh, she got my my eleven year old daughter got emotional. Wow. Uh, yeah, saying goodbye. Oh, wow. yeah, dude. So it was it was really it was it was really cute. Oh, that's yeah. Cute. And I'm going that's through cute. that whole thing where and I'm I'm better at it. Jessica's definitely I forget she's a first time mom, you know, because she's such a natural. <laughs> But um, I don't know if did you go through this, Adam, where you feel like you need to watch him all the time, make sure he's breathing, 
make sure everything's okay? Or were you more- Katrina was that way. So remember, I had the two younger siblings, That's right. right? So even like, uh, you talk about caring, right? Like, so that was one of the things like her family was like tripping out because again, I was, I had two younger siblings and, and, and I went th- I went through that when I was younger as a teenage boy. So when I had Max, like I used to have him, like he was five, five and a half pounds, right? So he was mm-hmm. tiny. So yeah. I could palm him, like in my little forearm. So I would tuck him like a football and be like doing dishes and walking around the house, <laughs> yeah. and switching him to the other arm and going <laughs> outside, walking the dog. And their family was like, oh my God, he's so comfortable with the baby like that. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, I went through a lot of that already. Katrina is the one, and still to this day, I tease her. Uh, we just now, what is he? He's a year and a half. And uh, we just broke free of having sex without the monitor in her hand. I mean, that was like <laughs> that was like the big joke in our house, like forever. I'm just like, you got to put the baby monitor down. Yeah. It's like so weird it's for really me for you to my do vibe. that, dude. How do you perform? Yeah, dude. So it's yeah, it was very uh, tough for me. One so, baby cry. Yeah. That's it. So she she does. She watches him. Uh, she watches him breathe like crazy, and she would get she would get very nervous a lot. Like if he hadn't moved for a while, so she'd sneak in the room and go check on him. Yeah. And, oh no. So, and I just let her. You know what I'm saying? Like because I know I I I do remember that. I remember remember thinking that way uh and then and, you know and they do every time you see your your pediatrician he reminds you they're not made of glass and they're more durable than you think they're gonna fall down they're gonna do all these things like it's gonna be okay and oh, so yeah i went this morning i go down because she went downstairs she knew i had to work today so she went downstairs and, and just fed him all night on the couch and so i go downstairs this morning and uh, I'm like, we should let me check his, his diaper for him. She's like, I forgot to check his diaper. And this this guilt hits her. Oh my God, what if he'd been pooped all? I'm like, honey, this won't be the first time. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens. Not, not to yeah. mention at that point, it's so little at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's like, not even stinky it's like, yet. It's like yeah. tar. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like it's li- weird yeah. black, yeah. you know, ooze. Dude, I remember when my son was uh, that age, and it takes like a, what does it take, like a week or so before the poop starts to stink? Uh, oh, it takes longer than that. Maybe longer. It, does, it doesn't start to stink. It actually doesn't really stink until food gets introduced. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. It that's starts right. to change color in a couple weeks. Yeah, it turns into like the mustard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but the stink, re- the stink doesn't come until food gets introduced. So I remember that, again, as a first time dad, getting used to the fact that his poop didn't really smell that, that much. Yeah. And I remember changing his diaper and it smelled really bad. And I was like, what's wrong? Yeah. I called the pediatrician. Most embarrassing phone call I've ever made in my life. I called the pediatrician and she's like, yeah, what's going on? And I'm like, um, I was changing you know, my son's diaper and, and it, it was- Really stinky. Yeah, yeah. really smelly. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, it's poop. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, right. you're right though. For I the first- hang up. The first, you know, because you don't introduce food till way later. Yeah. So for a while, they're not bad at all. And then yeah. all of a sudden they make a hard transition when yeah. you start introducing Oh, you want to know something trippy? So mm. this is new, or I shouldn't say new. It's new for me because again, my youngest is, a, uh, my youngest before Aurelius was my daughter at 11. So they didn't do this for them, for my older kids, but- you know when they do the heel prick test, mm-hmm. right? Because they're yeah. testing for, to see what their, I think it's their Billy Rubin levels to see if you know, how jaundiced they are and they mm-hmm. do that kind of stuff. So what they'll do is they'll prick the heel, then they'll squeeze the heel and then collect some blood to do the test, the early test. Now, when they did this on my kids, you know, they kind of held them down, the baby cries and it's kind of hard to watch, right? Not a big deal, but it's hard to watch because your kid's screaming right. or whatever. With my son... They had this like syringe, but it wasn't a needle. It was just the top part, and it was filled with this this fluid. And they're like, uh, "We're going to give this to him to help with the pain." So I'm like, "You ain't giving my kid pain medicine." And they're like, "Don't worry, it's called Sweet Ease, and it's uh, it's a little bit of sucrose." I'm like, "What else? What else is in there?" And they're like, mm. "Nothing, just a little bit of sucrose." I didn't believe them, so I looked it up. Believe it or not, when they give an infant a tiny, and it's literally a drop. They use a syringe, so it's like a tiny, tiny drop. When a baby has a sweet flavor in their mouth at that age, it acts like a painkiller. And sure enough, wow. they oh. gave him a tiny bit, pricked his heel, totally fine. That's interesting. And it's just, and they found this through studies uh, on breast milk. So the sweetness of breast milk will do the same thing. I see. How weird is well, that? Well, you know weird. what's you know what's actually really weird. Now that you say that, and that makes me wonder if so. One of the the only thing I swear that I felt like we have had that's been even the slightest bit of challenge with Max is teething. He definitely every time he breaks teeth, you know, like yeah. it changes his he, his behavior. He's crabby. He doesn't sleep well, he, and he's never like that. So we always know like new tooth, new tooth, right? And it's been that's been our one thing with him and. But now that you're saying that, I wonder too of what, if it's so bad for him because I've introduced him to zero sugar. Mm. He's had no sugar in his diet. And my friend's kids that are the same age, I mean, they've had ice cream and tried candy. and do, I mean, He's been eating solid food for a long time now. 
So we maybe have, give them a little bit of. I don't know if it works when they get older, though. I don't know if this is like an infant thing. Well, I would. There's a time I, well, I would think it's, as soon as uh, I mean, as long as they haven't been introduced to it, it's going to affect them that maybe. that dramatic. Or at least I'm speculating, right? Because I've never heard anyone say that, dude. It's the that would make thing. some sense to me. Like if he's never even had that in his mouth, really. Like I wonder. So now I want to try. Now I want to try to give him a little bit of sweet. It was so weird because they gave it to him and he didn't even cry. It's like they gave him huh. like medicine, and I'm like, this is bullshit. Let me look this up. Yeah, yeah it's super gross. Oh, wow, that's It's a tiny bit of sucrose. Well, it's definitely come a far away. I remember bringing up like only, uh, was it like a hundred something years ago where like probably longer than that, but like where they just thought that babies like didn't have pain receptors. <laughs> And yeah. they just would like open surgery and everything on oh, kids, oh and like God. they wouldn't give them any pain medication. Oh, yeah, that was like not that long ago. I didn't know that. The, yeah, the, a lot of reasons why those generations were so tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? just another, yeah. or just like create a lot of uh, you know serial killers. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, the, that's probably what happened. That's the side effect of I've, all. I've got some, a dad thing for you guys since we're on the dad talk right now. So and and looking for advice here, right? So. Uh, this is the new thing right now, uh, which I'm. It's hard for me not to laugh and enjoy it because it's. I know it's probably not a good behavior to allow him to keep doing. So he's just now starting to really piece together like um, uh, facial expressions and uh, expressing how he feels. Right. So like we've never seen like frustrated yet. <laughs> right. So it's this is brand new. This is like three oh, days. This is literally it. like three four days old right now. <clears throat> And he'll be doing something. He'll be, you know, playing with a toy and he can't get something on. And <laughs> he does that. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I die laughing every time because it goes right away. Like he totally does it and then he's fine. He's playing again. But the it, for that split moment that he gets frustrated, he expresses it and he never has done that before. Yeah. And I just, I, I burst into just laughter every single time because yeah. it's so cute and so funny to me. So Katrina's great. like, stop laughing. You're going to encourage him to do that all the time. I so, know, so. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know if I'm like. I can't. Can I not laugh? Can I not no, laugh? Oh, yeah, dude, come on. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. You gotta. Laugh it's hilarious that. to me because he does it over the silliest things too. It's not even like he shouldn't even be that frustrated over. My, but he's yeah. learning that that's like you know how he expresses. It's so frustration. hard, right? Because then you encourage bad stuff. But my daughter, <laughs> when she would get frustrated, so in in <laughs> Italian culture, it's this like stereotype, right? The the angry grandma or the mom that gets pissed off. And what they do when they get mad is they bite their hand. Have you ever seen the pictures of that? Where they're like, ah! Oh! Like they bite their hand. It means that they're frustrated. It's a it's an Italian okay. thing. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not familiar. And, yeah, anyway, my daughter used to do that. She would do this as a, like a toddler. She'd get really frustrated and she'd bite her hand like that. And we would crack up. Well, anyway, she ended up doing it for a long ass time because we, oh, we no. laughed and would encourage it. So that's what I mean. So okay. like, that's where I'm like, kind of, I'm conscious of it like that. Okay. I, I think it's funny, but I also don't want to be like every time, like laugh and let him see that I think it's hilarious. So then mm -hmm. he encourages him to do more of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Cause then I, I like, you know, you give them to somebody else to watch him and then they are like, Oh my God, who's this kid? This yeah. kid getting all angry. Yeah. Well, Hey, you're going to be proud of me, dude. I did a, uh, I actually did get a workout in this morning. Oh, I did. I, I would, I put the monitor on him. Jessica was with him. Uh, I had to use uh, pre workout. I did the the bubble gum, you know. Pre -workout. Actually, that stuff's uh, legit, dude. Yeah, it, it's a, definitely a rescue, when dude. You that need definitely it. makes sense right now, man. You need that edit, you know, added stimulant, something to get you going. Oh, I'm, I'm sure gonna, these I'm, right now. I'm gonna be living off yeah. caffeine for, for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> took a You're big ass, be on my plan here real soon. Took a big ass dose of that. Went in the garage and did like a half ass workout, which is way better than, than nothing at all. Well, you know, it's they did a, a pretty good job of of getting the flavor down because I mean, that was the big thing. I remember talking back and forth with Mike. One of the hardest things with with legion is that because they don't use a bunch of fake sugars and stuff to sweeten stuff oh like there's no sucralose yes right and those those are really those, it makes it a lot easier to make all these crazy flavors so when you want something custom like bubble gum yeah you know tough to do that without using all that and so they had to reformulate that like three or four times to get it down to where it's at so i thought they did a pretty good job considering yeah no, it tastes it great it totally worked uh hey so i know as of the recording of this podcast there's still this is like the longest election of all time Whoa. but there are there definitely is a clear loser uh, in this entire election right now. Who, Kanye West? Us? No. Not, and <laughs> both, both, yes, both true, but that's not what I'm thinking. Okay, all right, all right. The war on drugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, I saw Oregon. Yeah, drugs won. Yeah. The war Wait, on drugs is I saw the, I saw the What meme. happened? I saw so the there were two states that legalized- Oh, there was uh, two. Oregon two, no, and what else? No, no, no. Oregon was totally different. I'm going to get there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so there were two Sorry. other states. I don't remember which ones they were that, uh, that legalized the- recreational use. I think one decriminalized and one legalized recreational use of marijuana. And then Oregon 
decriminalized heroin. Small, yeah. small personal amount uh, uh, amounts of all drugs. Wow, Hunter Biden's excited. Yeah. <laughs> He's a, he's a, I'm gonna be an Oregonian. Yeah, no. <laughs> he uses more than personal about. Yeah, but it's but it's not legal. This is different. People need to understand this. Decriminalization. Yeah. is not this. You're not gonna. You can't go to the store in Oregon and buy crack. No, no. Wow. But I mean, you, I mean, if you have it on you, they're not gonna mess with you unless you look at like the intent to sell. Yeah. So it's a small amount. All drugs decriminalized. But that doesn't mean that they don't. They do nothing. I think what they'll do is they fine you and send you to. Rehab. Like a rehab course. Yeah, it's a, I saw it's a $100 fine, and then you get sent to like a, a rehab thing that you have to do if you get caught with it. So I- I'm, I'm so, pro. I am too. And I'm, I'm totally so, for it. And I'm so happy that- they're, Now, so long as they're also tough on public drug use, because you see what happened in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, see, that's where I'm, you know, like my bit of conservatism probably like comes in to- Because I see what, what happens in terms of like not having strict- laws about drugs and like how that moves within the homeless community mm -hmm. and then it just perpetuates more problems but yeah I like again if it's like how you guys were describing that in terms of them regulating it I'm all for that so that's the knock that so the people that are that are uh, up in arms about it are saying that look what happened in California did or what San Francisco did that was a terrible idea and look what we're seeing right now well so. what San Francisco did was stupid because they they people could shoot up heroin on the street and nobody would do anything about it and now, they could still stuff now, the store, I, they could shit on the on the yeah, concrete. I mean, they they're did a just lot, not they in the like, right mind. They go do things and 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 steal stuff, you know. And it's they're trying to like get the next fix. No, San Francisco did did a bad job. I mean, look, you can't smoke cigarettes in front of stores in, in San Francisco. You'll get a ticket, or they'll make you put the. But you could shoot a heroin. That's how ri ridiculous <laughs> they are. So I think they still need laws for that kind of stuff. Right. But I think if they catch you. And you have you know these personal you know amounts or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, go to in sending people to rehab. Yes, it costs tax money, but I think it's cheaper than sending people to prison. It is over and over again. Oh, totally. But we'll see. This is the wonderful thing about having states in the United States is that you could test it in different areas, see how it works. And speaking of which, uh, Silas Sybin, did you see the, stru oh. the study that came out on that? Yeah, well, I was gonna say. Well, that has to open up a lot more therapy op options, right, in states like that. Well, Silas Sybin, a study came out that showed that it was four times as effective as just came out yesterday. Antidepressants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. This, this is crazy. It's I, this is so we had in our forum we had somebody asking about you know getting into the the medical marijuana field and they tagged me and they asked I don't know if I actually I think I just said pass and I didn't explain why. Uh, I really, th if you're somebody who's interested in like, uh, get opportunity, right. Business wise, uh, psilocybin right now is what marijuana was 10 years ago. So I think that's, there's huge opportunity for that because it's with everything that's coming out as far as the research or like what you're sharing right now, uh, is just pointing in the direct, and then you're seeing states that are either decriminalizing or going full legal on mm -hmm. it. It's only a matter of time before it's going to be just like marijuana. Mm -hmm. It will. And in the opportunities, even like with the medical marijuana, uh, when, when that started happening, when it was a gray market, that's that's when it's, that's when it's best. That's when the profits could be huge. Yeah, because that's when people are still scared Correct. because it's not flooded. People are still and that that is the time to jump on it and mm -hmm. to do it is when it is a little scary to yeah. get involved with it. But once it's like, and that's what's funny is now everybody wants to do marijuana. It's like God, it's so oversaturated now that everybody is growing and doing it and it's so heavily taxed that the if you're getting into if you're getting into it because you're an activist and you're you're all for that then that's one thing but if you're getting into it because you think it's a great money maker or business not so much anymore yeah the studies on psilocybin are fascinating though it's like they're they're treating people with depression and then they're essentially curing them for like they'll check they'll test them again 6 months 12 months later and the depression hasn't come back that's crazy now here's the here's the, the business side of me that might be a tough, like that might be a tough medical business, right? Because if you just if you, right now with depression, you have to you're on prescription mm. every single month. Mm -hmm. If you cure it and then don't have to come back, yeah, you know what's the profit you know going to look like on that? Right, so I'm, right. I'm from a business standpoint, uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping they find a way to profit, not because. I'm trying to get, you know, I want big pharma to grow or anything like that, but rather if there's a profit, then we're going to see more investment and we're going to see more oh, treatment yeah. opportunities. It's just, I mean, it's, 
it's so interesting to see like even PTSD, like what it's done, you know, for people coming back, like it's just been a game changer. And we've been like withholding this, I feel like from people that really need it. So I really hope that, yeah, it spreads out. A bit oh, more. it's, it's going to, I mean, you, I see it already. I'm, I'm you know, I, I pay attention to that a lot. Um, and I have family that's in it right now. So what I think is going to happen is it's going to, it's going to shake up the whole, you know, therapy side, because what will happen is at first, uh, why everybody's scared, like just like with marijuana, you know, to do it. Once it gets more accepted and normal, uh, most people will just bypass going to a doctor. They'll go get it themselves, and they'll either hire a shaman or you know a friend who they trust to like mm-hmm. take them through the process. Like I think it's going to open up that a lot. You're going to hear more of these like health or you know life coach yeah. shaman type people that will be taking people through that process because- i agree i agree mm-hmm. but to be to be clear the studies are done with uh, <clears throat> of course of course like real therapists with the with the 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 psilocybin and, like I, and, just- I, and I know i'm piss- probably gonna piss off some therapist that's a, sure. a fan and a listener that to say that but the truth that's the truth and well, if you're not thinking that way as a therapist right now you should be well dude i know it's, somebody it's gonna change i know somebody who uh, had some trauma that she wanted to deal with saw some of these studies went and did uh, a bunch of mushrooms with friend thinking that they were going to process them mm. and actually came out with ptsd yeah because the they the ex- overdid it they the experience was terrifying yeah. and they weren't they weren't guided and led through with somebody who you know was, was knows how to do it. Yeah, super interest, uh, important part of the whole thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what they say in the studies. Yeah, totally. So anyway, oh. so uh, we got Thanksgiving coming up, huh? Yeah, yeah dude. What do you, so now? What does everybody do, right? So as you guys have like a, a family tradition, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you have like it goes at someone's house and it's massive. Like, what's it look like? For so you? I don't know what it's going to look like this year because <clears throat> I have an infant. So we might want to n- avoid big. You know, gatherings, especially because it's COVID and flu season and all that stuff. And yeah. so that's just smart. Um, but usually what we do is we get together and it's usually anywhere between, I don't know, 40 to 60 of us in one <laughs> house. And and uh, we have uh, pasta al forno. This is a, a Sicilian dish. It's really good. Uh, we have the turkey and the stuff. So, you know, what we do basically is we have all the American staples and then we throw on top of it a bunch of Italian mm. food. So we end Just up- Just a giant meatball that's so, you're all going to cook. Well, that's funny because that's because Trina's family does the same thing except it's all Mexican food that we add to. So we have the turkey. We do two turkeys normally. And then on, in addition to that, there's all this Mexican food too. So Turkey tamales. And- yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what we'll do. <laughs> what, are, what is the traditional Mexican food for this time? Is it tamales for real? It is, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Tam- yeah, tamales and I enchiladas. Tamales. like that, That'll be there for sure. And I forget We just what add extra potatoes. Yeah, is that, <laughs> that's what we do. It's, so it's just a yeah. massive mound of mashed potatoes. <laughs> just this family has <laughs> potatoes and whiskey. No, do you, potatoes and whiskey. Is it your mom and dad's that host it? I mean, where do you normally go? So we, we we each year we we alternate. So uh, I think this year we go to to Courtney's family. Uh, oh, okay. So you guys you switch off with Courtney, whose family? Yeah, with. yeah. So we just switch it off that way, and that way too, my brother kind of you know organizes because he does the same thing with his family, and so he'll go with like his wife's family, and then so we just kind of alternate it that way. Now, be know. honest, Justin. Yeah. Which which one no, do you like better? You, because somebody's gonna listen to this, dude. I can't say, it, but Stephanie Courtney's family. <laughs> <laughs> Is it better food or what? Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's just, uh, yeah, it's better food. I think they just, um, yeah, they care about a lot more of the the production of the whole thing. Like my family's a little bit more about like You're interacting and like you know doing social things and like it's very like fun atmosphere. But then the food on her side's way better. So it's just like kind of a give and take. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a good time. Well, I know uh, Butcher Box is doing uh, a free turkey. Yeah, right now they do this every year. I think it's a great, uh, great. And the turkey they give is amazing. You guys remember the turkey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah from yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. There's by the way, they're saving my ass right now because, well, not right now. It's now kicking, moving forward because the tornado of having an infant and the kids and all that stuff. Mm. I'm, it's nice. I'm going to have my my meat just sent to my door, grill it up. So I'm going to be responsible for cooking. Yeah. Now for the next. <clears throat> I don't know, a month or two. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, kids, get ready. We're so, going to have steak and rice every night. So did you guys not set up? So what Delicious. we do, so they, and I forget, they have apps for this now. And like all, did they, you guys didn't set up like a whole food plan thing for the, for this next two weeks or whatever? What do you mean food plan? So, oh, right. Oh yeah. They have apps for, we had, Katrina downloaded an app and we had the whole family like yeah, each person scheduled out. brings a dish to Yeah. You. We didn't cook, yeah. we didn't cook nothing for like a month, over a month. Oh man, I screwed up. Yeah. yeah set that up. Yeah. yeah we'll you know, get, they, throw they, some food. Your yeah. Way. No, yeah. I'm I'm literally prepared to do steak, broccoli, oh god, ground beef, rice. Your poor wife. Uh, this guy. 
<laughs> yeah, but we're going to be on the bodybuilder diet. Dude, you, have, you have so Tilapia much. You have so and, much yeah. family and friend with all of us here. You should you should absolutely do that. You know, it's so worth it. You know what's happening right so, now? Because I do have my mom and my aunts that are close by. But my grand, remember my grandmother? How she had that little mini stroke, and then my grandfather right mm-hmm. now is uh, cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. He seems okay, but cancer he just broke his arm. Right now, their hands are full just taking care of them. Yeah. So I feel really bad asking my mom. You she's even, already offered. But so what you what you do is you set the – and i tell you what. Like I, I would never thought about this. This didn't exist before. Is this called the food train or something like that? Something like that, okay. yes. So they everybody was actually super appreciative because you know what happens right now? Everybody feels like they, they need to do something or give something or do something for you. Mm-hmm. And this organizes it for them. So instead of them feeling guilty because they don't come over and help for three days or do something like that, it's like, I can look at your calendar. I can go, oh, Tuesday next week, Sal has no one cooking dinner. Yeah, it's and convenient. Katr- yeah. It's very cool. And Katrina and I will make dinner for you guys. Totally. That's, and then, that's how and, I feel. Yeah. And then you got it all ready. And then we feel like we're contributing and helping. And then and it's easy because it's one meal. I know when to bring it. Like, And then you don't even have to have people come in. Like People dropped it off at our door so they didn't wake the baby all or right. like that. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that. I'll put all my food restrictions on there. Yeah. yeah. No, you can do all <laughs> no, that. No dairy, no gluten. Please match this macro <laughs> yeah, profile. Yeah. For- <laughs> I mean, you can't. You, it does allow you to do all that stuff on there if you really want to get crazy. But yeah, yeah no, I think uh, we uh, super. Uh, I was super grateful we did that. Like I, I thought it was kind of weird at first. I was like, oh, we don't need to. My mom said she'll come over and help. And Katrina's like, no way. We have so many family members that want to. Yeah. She's like, I want to organize mm-hmm. this so they're not all overlapping. And then we in one day we get like twelve meals. Like yeah. she's like, I don't want it to be like that. All right, right. No, all right. totally. I, I'm glad you brought that up. I probably like like to contribute to that and i'm gonna see now if you like turn into when adam remember when he was like like super versed in like everything that came out on netflix <laughs> you know, i feel like sal's gonna turn into that now you know, to, like update us on like the latest stuff here yeah. i was just watching uh, one of the uh, an- the not ancient it was i guess it is ancient i, I always want to add like aliens after that but it's just ancient egypt okay. uh there's like new new studies or new uh findings that they found uh from the saqqara tomb so that's the one near the step pyramid and uh, I guess like they found this uh, mummified baby lion cub. This is the first that they've ever found. So it was like they're, it's really cool because they're trying to figure out like how, you know, that was a part of their rituals, how it was a part of, you know, that time period. Like they had like their own sort of like lion pets and things. And uh, that was like a brand new discovery that they found. And also they they found like this family uh, had all kind of died around the same time and had been found in this this one tomb together and pretty much uh, came to conclude that it was probably like malaria. And so this was like the first case, like a thousand years before when they thought the first date of malaria was found uh, on earth. Wow. So, I, I, want, I almost watched that. It's that's, really that's, cool. It's new. Yeah, it's it's brand new. I almost did watch. Instead, I ended up watching Blood of Zeus. It's an animated uh, cartoon. Honestly. Okay, yeah, well, is, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sounds about right. It's actually pretty good too. <laughs> did you guys see? Did you guys see what uh, Burger King is doing right now, ad wise? No. Okay, this is interesting. Doug, can you pull us up? Because uh, I try to dig around and find some. So pull up Burger King promotes McDonald's. Wait, what? Yes. So this is a new. It's a real. It's real. It's not fake, uh, and it's not like trolling. It's this, and it. What it reminds me of. Remember Sal when you talked about uh, how like Coke and Pepsi. Yes, how Coke and Pepsi, and it's kind of like the war on like healthy food. Like that, it's actually making like this whole organic and healthy. Like like is making such a great push that instead of them fighting amongst each other, teaming up together and helping each other. Well, that makes sense. But uh, are they having wants at, you to order from McDonald's? Yeah. Now why? Right. Would it like what's the, to get what, addicted back to uh, fast food? Wow, it, and why, what's the deal? What are they? What it's are they? It's really the ad is just like listen, you know, you, if you can't get a great, you know, Whopper, sometimes you can't, and you're nearby a McDonald's instead, so a Big Mac is the next best choice. So what? here, this That's is why so strange. This is why it's a brilliant strategy. Um, in the '80s, you, Coke and Pepsi both agreed to compete with each other. And talk crap about each other um, in ads. They had the, they call it the cola wars. Wars, excuse me. You can look this up. And they would have the take the you know the taste test, and they'd have blind taste tests, and which one's better, Pepsi or Coke. Right. And it became this big thing, and people didn't know and didn't realize that they had kind of agreed to do this behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening is they both took shares away from like Seven Up and Sprite and all these other companies because people thought that they had to pick between Coke and Pepsi. Burger King and McDonald's are the the they're both like the original 
fast food, American fast food things. And it's obvious that a lot of their shares are being in, eaten into with like five guys and right. all these other companies. Well, so, so that's smart. Yeah. I think it's also because of the pandemic, right? So I, I was reading it, uh, the article and that was the, it sounds like, um, and which makes sense, right? So I, I don't know about you guys, but if you have family or friends that have never used Uber Eats or DoorDash or anything, now, now everybody's become very privy to that. Like before, you know, COVID, a lot of people did not, still a, a majority didn't use it, where I think now we were all forced to do it. So now you can get all your favorite restaurants and healthy food or, and DoorDash to you. And so I think just the fast food industry in general is being hit pretty hard. And so I think it's a, I think it's them trying to join forces because of that. Is that What do you think, yeah. Doug? Are you reading over there? Big Mac versus Yeah, Whopper. that's what I'm seeing. Is okay. that they're actually calling out other uh, fast food places such as KFC, Subway, Domino's. Oh, well, I was wrong then. So are they doing like a like they're all kind of working together? Then? Yeah, it's it's kind. Of, I think it's what it is. They're trying is, to support the fast food industry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just oh, in wow. general, because I think again, because of COVID, there's so many people that are now getting food delivered to their house, and if a lot of times that seems like a, I mean, it, it's a good thing. Like society's moving in a little bit more towards the healthier options. Like I don't know, maybe we we aren't like buying as much fast. Well, food. Well, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I've had McDonald's French fries like several times over the really? last couple. Yeah, and. Never ate McDonald's, and then I'm like, you know what? Oh, you, oh, you the fries will get you. The fries, I think they sprinkle, I don't know, cocaine on them yeah, or something. Yeah, meth. They're they're literally addicted. An organ, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. These fries are so good. <laughs> ah, they're energizing. An organ, they definitely do. <laughs> my mouth. Why is my mouth numb? Ah. Anyway, oh, Justin, man. I want to ask you about your creative yeah. process. I don't want to give it away, but oh, you've okay. you've been doing these like what's going on here ads and commercials for some of our spot our, our partners. Uh huh. And uh, they're not out yet but I've seen some of them and they're fucking hilarious. Oh, thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. So what is, like, do you have a creative pro? Like, what do you do to prepare for this? Yeah, I do. I've I've actually, like, over the last year, I've been just writing a bunch of, like, random thoughts and ideas and, like, seeing what's, like, seeing what I can kind of come back to and add and, and see if it, like, works. Um, and I've had this idea of, of I, we, we did this a little bit on the podcast where I would just experiment and, like, add, like, little funny skits or something in front to just, like, add some entertainment but i was like can i can i actually like put together something uh for one of our sponsors and 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 have like a funny little skit that we can put together so uh i've just been exhausting like all these ideas and then trying to do like different genres of humor so like uh, i'll do one that's you know really wild and zany and then i'll try to do one that's like you know, like more based on puns or like something that's really quick or music based or, or whatever. And so I, I'm just trying to like kind of put stuff out there, um, you, you know, that's a little more fun. And I, I know that um, it's, people get tired of like ads all the time. So why not like have fun with it? Well, so what's, what's crazy is about this is you'll explain to me and Adam your idea. And I know Adam and I are both like, I don't get it. Yeah, what are you doing? I have, yeah, oh, it doesn't sound funny. What do you I mean? know, I stopped explaining them to you guys. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. You, you guys just got to see it when it's done. Yeah, like you were, you know, you're telling me about, I'm not going to give it away. Sorry, guys. Sorry, podcast listeners. But you yeah. was explaining one and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Oh, well, thank like, God for Eli but, because he like interprets me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, he gets me. He's finally like coming to a point where he's like, okay, I see what, what lives inside your mind. And, and now I'm, what about this? And then he'll show me something. And I'm like, yeah, you nailed it. You I know? just picture you with like your headphones on you eat an edible and just get in your space <laughs> come up with weird <laughs> ideas did i hit the nail on the head or what i mean like maybe maybe that happens <laughs> sometimes but really like i just i have constant weird wacky things going on in my brain all the time and i just have to i just have to do a better job of writing it down and so i've actually just tried to create more space for me to not think about anything but that for that hour Dude, and I that's what it. helped a lot i love it yeah. there the the last one i saw i can't wait to for us to put it out it actually goes out tomorrow does it really yeah, yeah it'll be out tomorrow oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, so it goes live tomorrow. So. I was dying. I yeah, was com right. completely dying. Um, Adam, I have a question for you. Tell me. I remember when you used to compete, um, and I used to make fun of you. Uh, I don't know if I did this to you or behind your back, but anyway, I, <laughs> I used to. I'll let you know. Yeah, I used to make fun of the compression pants in shirts you would wear sometimes when you'd work out. Yeah, yeah. you know, like because they're tight, they look like tights, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh gosh, what are you wearing? So, right, right. Yeah. You know, anyway, you, you said that to my face. I did. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Uh, dude, I'm reading studies on compression clothes for working out, uh, and um, they improve performance and muscle building and strength gains. So not just during the workout, but literally they they there was one study I saw oh, where they no. took two groups, yeah. and one group wore compression garments, the other one didn't, and then they followed them over the course of 12 weeks. 
the compression garment group like significantly gain more muscle and strength. So weird. I I for for leg day I love them. Mm. I to I, I don't it just makes me feel more secure and stable. Mm. The same feeling you get like when you put a belt and knee knee sleeves on and you go do a squat, don't you feel more stable? Sure. So that fe- I get that feeling in my legs from wearing like the compression pants on leg day. That's the mm. only time you'll see me. And when I'm in here, right? So when I'm in here and I'm doing like Turkish get ups or I'm doing stuff on our, cause our grass in here is like razor sharp. Yeah. Oh, what's yeah. up with the grass? Dude? Yeah. Well, we got the, I think we got the cheaper stuff back yeah. then. You know what I'm saying? The, the softer stuff was more expensive, right? You'll leave so, with turf burn. Oh yeah. Sure. No, it tears your, it tears your knees up and stuff. So if I, if normally if you see me wearing them now, it's cause I'm doing a workout in here and I have plans to either do like a Turkish get up or lunges or something where my knees are going to be dragging on the grass in here. But I do, I enjoy, I enjoy them when I'm, when I'm uh, squatting, when I'm squatting, I just, it makes me feel secure and tight going into it. So I feel, I feel great. And I don't know if that's just the feedback too. Cause when you start to get the pump there, it makes it even tighter on your body. So you feel, I don't know if it's more in my head than it's actually really helping. So I was trying to read the science behind it and they really don't have a quite, they say, well, it might reduce inflammation. It might, but it's kind of speculation. It is very strange though, because I read that study then I read a bunch of studies done on endurance athletes that found the same thing, that there were performance uh, improvements, not just in the workout, but even like as the weeks progressed. Because I thought to myself, hmm. maybe you get a performance improvement because of the stability. Right, the stability. Is it more psychological? Because like, like what, what, what does it really promote other than just like adding that like feeling of security? I, I think yeah, I think it's psychological. It's like a thunder vest. You know? Yeah, totally. Uh, it's, like a, my, it's like a thund- dog. Yeah, yeah, you know, they give you those. Just hugging you, real, yeah, yeah, real nice like, and snug. Yeah, so, you know, before you go put 400 pounds on your back, I feel like I'm being hugged. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like a thunder vest. It's just, totally. <laughs> I remember when you forgot your vest, you had Justin hug you while you squatted. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I was that guy. I had to yeah, walk just, out the room. I always get a little bit more out with what, that. What yeah. the hell's happening right now? <laughs> so, hey, so I hear Mirror is coming out with some new, uh, was it new colors or products, Doug? What were they saying on that? They had new colors introduced this summer. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Their stuff is nice. They got really nice stuff. No, it's, it's, it's beyond nice, bro. Are you kidding I mean, me? That's what I, I mean. I, don't I know use I use one, I use a either my mirror coffee or my mirror water bottle every single day. Yeah, the wa- the water bottle has been huge for me because like that's one of those things I can if I have that constantly filled up, I know I'm gonna like at least stay hydrated because if not, I'm I'm always like cotton mouth by the time the, the end of the day and I'm in, I have a headache and all that. So it's been it's been huge. Do for you me. forget to drink? I do. You do, huh? Yeah. Unless it's coffee. Yeah. Yeah. That's the um, that was a strategy I deal with clients. Is uh, oh yeah. Look at that! They got red, yellow. And oh, I hadn't and green. seen that. Yeah, yeah, Doug, yeah. That did not hit this summer. That's all new on their website, right there. Yeah, the notes Ooh, said like this summer, one. but this is the first time I've seen it. Too. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that, that's that's all new. They didn't have those colors. Those are nice, bright, vibrant colors. Yeah, I like cool. those. Yeah, that was a strategy I deal with clients uh, for water. Is rather than telling them, you know, make sure you drink more water, make sure you track or whatever, I would have them get a bottle. That was either a half gallon or a gallon, mm-hmm. and then say this is you have to finish this by the end of the day. And I it like was the- really cold water too. Oh, okay. Which is like this is great because it, it you know it literally doesn't change from when you pour it in there. It's like the same temperature. Yeah. No. I this now I'm giving this to Jessica now, right? Because she's you know because she had the C-section, so she's sitting down or in bed, isn't moving much, and she'll forget to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just filling it up, putting it next to the bed, and saying, okay, here's your. Do either here's one of you guys water. know what Rachel's getting us next? Because I know every month, right? So we get shipments of of this every single month and she rotates like what they have so many different canisters and i don't know what she's doing next do you know doug do you know what she's i don't know i just shot a bunch of uh photos for our website of our mirror gear oh you did Mm -hmm. yeah i think she i think she wanted to do the wine Bro, your dog, <laughs> your dog's excited, having, dude. He's having a good time over there, bro. Hey, hey. <laughs> he's getting a little randy these hey, days. Hey, Did he bro. have a wet dream? He was he was humping Doug yesterday. I've never seen him do that before. <laughs> no, bro. What are you doing? What's wrong, buddy? He's like yeah, his he's, owner. <laughs> he was yeah, great. Gets so excited. He's such a he's such a sweetheart. I think yeah. he might have had like a like a little sex dream. Yeah, dogs have those. Yeah, dude. Just woke up out from it, you know, yeah. mid, mid action. Now he's embarrassed. Yeah, he's yeah. got a serious chub. He's walking Sorry, around right now. <laughs> <laughs> poor dude. So, what do you, why you say poor? He's obviously putting in a good your mood. business on blast there. He's, buddy. Well, he's got nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? That's a poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to help him out? You I'm bought, not going to help him out. <laughs> you, you bought a boy partner for him, poor guy. <laughs> like in prison. You know what I mean? Cute. First question is from Steve Morrison four sixteen. Can you use MAP suspension movements in place of focus or trigger sessions? 
mad genius or bad idea? <laughs> I, like how they, I like how they phrase the question. Great yeah. idea. Scientist. It's a great. So suspension trainers Just are be careful, yeah. excellent for training the entire body. We have a whole program called MAP Suspension that's completely designed around suspension trainers. They're good because they're versatile. They use your body weight. They're uh, You can tailor them to your fitness level. They're appropriate for beginners all the way to advanced. Easy to regress or progress. Right. Now, here's the deal. Okay, so if you don't know what a trigger session is, I'll give you a quick rundown, right? Trigger sessions are low intensity, for lack of a better term, workouts that you do on your off days. Okay, so let's say Monday you train your body really hard. Tuesday is supposed to be your off day. Well, Tuesday you can still do a trigger session, about a 10-minute trigger session for target body parts, low intensity, just get a little bit of a pump, feel a little bit of a burn, and in target muscles you want to focus on. And you can do that several times in that day, you know, two, three times a day on your off days. It facilitates recovery, and it actually helps your body build more muscle and burn more body fat. Now, in our MAPS anabolic program, this is where trigger sessions originated, we recommend bands, resistance bands, because of their versatility and because it's easier for the for you to manage the intensity than it is with weights. Suspension trainers, also a great idea. In fact, you can do this with any form of resistance. You can do trigger sessions. But I like suspension trainers too because they're also uh, very versatile. So if you're doing a trigger session at work, if you're doing it you know, right before lunch, it's easy to hook up your suspension trainer to a uh, you know, secure surface and do some you know 10 minutes of pumping exercises for target areas. I love this. You just got to be careful not to overdo it, right? So because you can overdo it um, because you can make the suspension trainer very challenging. I mean, you can make the exercise. That's why we've made a whole program around it, right? You can you can design it to be really, really challenging and get really sore uh, from doing too much. So that, my only thing would, would be to caution whoever it is, is that you just remember when you do trigger sessions, the idea is to facilitate recovery. It's not to get a hard workout. So, you know, something light, easy. And, but what's great about the suspensions is that you can regress it. You can make it really easy. And what I love about this as an idea is it kind of is like, so in, Ma in MAPS Anabolic, we, we talk about trigger sessions as the off day type of stuff. In MAPS Performance, we talk about mobility work. You kind of get uh, a, a little it's like bit a hybrid of, of both. It is a little bit of hybrid of both. That's, That's what I a like good point. about what I love about suspension training. You know, one of the things that so my sister who works for the company and follows all the programs that we always release, and she's going through the suspension trainer. And like one of the things she said to me, she goes, "Brother," she goes, "I cannot believe how incredible like my shoulders feel." from using the suspension trainer. Mm -hmm. And I was explaining to her that, you know, the instability that the straps give and the ability for you to go through this really deep range of motion, just great for joint support. Oh, so yeah. you get these great mobility benefits, plus you get the trigger trigger benefits from it. So I love this idea. If you have one of our suspension trainers already or the program uh, to use this as like triggers or slash mobility type workouts. Next question is from Katie Sion. What are the qualifying markers in becoming an intermediate lifter? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, there's no belt system in lifting, right? Like in martial arts where you, you can go through the belt system right, and right. It, it signifies- We should have, certain, have that, though. That would be cool. Wouldn't it be great? Create that, yeah. right? <laughs> certain, certain, it'll signify that you've, you know- you, Time under the iron exactly. or something. It will like, give people better ideas of who you should be paying attention to yeah. in the gym and not, right? Totally. Yeah. Like, oh, look at that white belt. So, over there. <laughs> so here, here's what I think. Um, I would say, generally speaking, if you have been working out consistently Consistently, and what I mean by consistently is week in, week out, at least two to three days a week minimum for about a year. You're probably close to an intermediate lifter. Um, you know, skill level wise, you should probably be able to perform certain fundamental movements like a squat or a deadlift uh, or an overhead press or a row. But really, it's about learning your body because you you may be lifting for a year and working on mobility and still not be able to squat, but you know your body because you've been training for a year. You kind of know what it can and can't do. You know to apply, how to apply intensity properly. So I would say probably around a year of consistent no break, you know, no long break in between type training. I think that's probably where I'd say someone's intermediate. Yeah, I, I, you know, I like this question too, mainly because I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. I mean, I think there's uh, a, a, we could go back and forth on what, what we would consider an immediate lifter. Now, so for me, I, I think an intermediate lifter, um, I, I would say that you have good form in, in, in any exercise that you do. Like, so the, the beginning process of lifting, whether that takes you six months, nine months, a year, two years to get to this point, 
but all the the fundamental movements, everything from squat, deadlift, to a row, to a bench press, to a bicep curl, to a stand, shoulder press, all the, the basic movements and exercises that you see most people doing, uh, to be considered an intermediate lifter, I think you should be able to perform those exercises with good form. Mm -hmm. That that to me is the f and then and then advanced is to take that good form and do things. Start piling on it. Yeah, load, load like or, lots yeah. of load and high intensity, right? So to me, beginner, you're Different learning learning overload. technique form. What does that look like? Intermediate, you've now accomplished good form. You can pretty much pick up a barbell, a dumbbell, perform the exercise, execute it with good mechanics. Advanced lifter, you can now load like crazy, do explosively, dynamically, and and maintain good form. That's yeah, kind of how I would tend to agree with that. I mean, in, in terms of uh, the qualifiers, because I know a lot of people usually think immediately like how long they've been going to the gym and doing their routine and you know it's for some people it's even been uh you know eight to ten years or you know however long it is but uh i wouldn't even consider them an intermediate level just because the form is something that i do sort of pick apart right away and right. that's that's not to say that's not to take anything away but me as a trainer and like you're asking me this question i would i would have to then take them from where they are and start from the beginning to learn the mechanics establish you know all the right patterns uh so if you've actually done that work and you've gone through and established all the right mechanics you know how to adjust your posture you know how to uh perform these things uh, with with ease, uh, then you know I think we're we're ready to graduate uh, and, and really like kind of start getting yourself more into like the on the path to start loading it more heavily. And then when we get to like advanced, it's got to be how quickly you can load it and with how much load. Well, yeah. I like using that instead of a time frame too, because the the opposite is true sometimes too. Like I've had clients that you know, hire me and because they have an athletic background or they have incredible body awareness, they pick up on cues really quick. You know, once I show them the movement one or two times, yeah. they get right in the groove and like, it's like, oh wow, this person's already, so that person could be, I could consider that person even after a few months, potentially uh, an intermediate lifter because they've, we've done all the exercises, they can perform it perfectly. I can give them verbal cues and they can adjust their body right away. Like that to me over, like and to Justin's point, you could be lifting for five years and I consider you still a beginner. If I look at the mechanics, how you move and there's no attention to the, the detail of the movement and all you've really focused on over those five years is, can I lift more weight? Can I lift more weight? Can I lift more weight? Because the body will do all, kind, all sorts of things to contort itself and leverage itself to lift more weight. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are an advanced lifter, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you know, you're know you you're hearing this answer from trainers, and I know what we're doing right now. We're trying to think of watching someone work out and what kind of workout would I recommend to them? Yeah, where we'd place them. Right. And honestly, it, it doesn't matter because here's the deal. Here's a wonderful thing I think about resistance training in particular is there's no there's no destination. There's never a point you hit. There's where no you're, spoon. Where you're done, right? Where you're done. <laughs> you're, it's it's all about- making it philosophical. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. all about, that's a matrix reference. Yeah. It's all about the journey. It's all about constantly you know, changing your workout to suit your, your current goals, the context of your life, your you know if you have injuries or pain, your age, you know how your diet is, stress levels. The workouts are always going to change. It kind of doesn't really matter. I mean, if I'm training a client, I'm going to assess them, no matter what. Doesn't matter how long they've been working out. I'm going to do an assessment based off of their movement, based off of their fitness level. Then I'm going to train them accordingly. So. Yeah, it's a constant. No, that's yeah, a, it's it, a it's a really good point you're bringing up, Sal. Because I'm I'm now thinking about okay, how why is this person asking this question, right? And so a lot of times, like we list programs, like this falls in the beginner, this falls right. in the media, this falls in advance. Mm -hmm. But and, and so based off of that theory, then someone like myself who's been lifting for 20 years would never do something in starter. Well, that's not true at all. You know, start our starter program is the most beginner program that we own yet. There are movements and exercises in there that Still I has a lot of value. Yeah, that have t yeah. tremendous value right. that I will always revisit and intermittently introduce into my own routine. So, to your point, that may, that's a very good point. That it doesn't matter what le whether you're an advanced, beginner, intermediate. Uh, that doesn't mean that the, oh, this is the program for you, and you there's no nothing of value that is in a beginner 
uh, program either. No, and, and I love the intermediate phase if there is such a thing because there's a lot. This is where you do most of your learning. Mm. In the beginner phase, you're actually learning that you, you you actually start to realize you don't know a lot. Yeah, you don't you can't do certain things. This is what you realize in the beginner phase, and a lot of the strength gains that come in the beginner phase are neurological. Um, and you, you don't necessarily build a ton of muscle, but you get strong. What's that called? Dunbar's law, or it, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, and that's honestly, like, I, I know we, <laughs> I don't really know what you can take away from this question, other than I think it really is just about like your education, like how much time you've put into where like how much you know about your body and how much you know how to manipulate things to get your body to then get through these plateaus and, and keep progressing. Yeah, I could say this for me, I I don't think I would have considered myself from what I understand to be advanced. I think it took me a good five, five plus years to really understand my body. I still believed in certain false ideas about resistance training for five, six, seven years after I started working out. Yeah. It took me that long to figure Now, I didn't have a podcast like Mind Pump that I could listen to. A lot of the information I was getting was trying to sell me supplements or whatever. But it took me that long of listening to my body, figuring my body out, and to really get to the point where I could train myself uh, like I can now, right? I, I feel like I can go into a gym, and if I'm being honest with myself, I can really do what I think I need at that moment to feel my best. Next question is from Jerry Gear. What would be five staple foods to incorporate into your diet to cover the most nutritional needs? Steak, fish, gotta be two. <laughs> what kind Ooh, of, that wow. sounds like an animal by itself. Steak, hey, fish. Hey, yeah. steak, and, steak fish. Like steak, steak fish. Steak and fish have gotta be in there, right? I yeah. mean, can we agree on that? That's you know what? Make the top five. If, if, you, if you wanna look at a singular food that provides you with almost everything you need, it's meat. gonna be an ad. Yeah, it's gonna be meat. Yeah. It's, it's probably gonna be red meat of some sort. Right. Beef, bison. Um, it's got almost pretty much everything your body needs from a nutritional standpoint. It's the reason why people can make a diet up like the carnivore diet and yeah. it'd be okay. Yeah. You know? and be, it's not yeah. ideal, but I don't think you can eat any other singular food by itself and not die. No. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. I would say eggs. Mm. Um, eggs oh, are okay. definitely up there. Th there you go. Extremely nutritious, very nutrient dense organ meats. Their organ meats are so nutrient dense you can actually eat too much. Can we, th can we throw that in meat though? I feel like that's part of it. You, like wrapped in meat, right? Because yeah, you, you have meat, specific. fish, eggs. Well, then you're going to take up four. We only get five. Uh, all right. So you know what I'm saying so. Like, let's just say meat and liver all go together, right? All right. So organ, all animal products, right, is up there for nutritional. Okay. Needs. Okay, so that's a good uh, one. Because egg is money too, I yeah, think. And yeah. then uh, <sighs> uh, for fruit, I would say berries. Berries are oh, some yeah. of the mm. some of the most valuable fruit, high in fiber. I can't live without cheese. So <laughs> I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> Dude, five is not going to be cheese is not going to be in the top five. Justin, hey man, if you're not intolerant, it's a good source of food. You know what? He's act <laughs> you know what? he's actually right. Dairy on its own, if you can tolerate it well, is extremely nutrient dense. I know there are certain parts of the world where they survive almost solely. Yeah. On the milk from animals. You know the Mongols? Mongols. Thank yes, you. Let's, yes. let's talk about this. Yes, yeah. they, they, <laughs> they conquered because of their cheese. They actually did. They yeah. they they survived mostly on milk from, I think it was horse milk, right? Yeah, horse like milk. yak milk or, or something. Or yak milk yeah. and, uh, and, and blood. Yeah. Um, I know the Maasai tribe of Africa does the same thing. So dairy is extremely nutrient. The problem is a lot of people can't digest it well. Like yeah, that's the problem. I wouldn't do well with it. So what are we going to do? Okay, so, so what, we got organ so, meats, meats in general, and then we got- uh, I like Berries for berries, fish, for fruit, berries, eggs. Yep. So we have one more. Fish, fish eggs, eggs are also extremely nutrient dense. That's that really falls good. that falls under fish and eggs. All right, so that's cheating. <sighs> yeah. All right, let's. So think what's your top vegetable then? If we got to throw one of those. Oh, in there. that's a good question. Yeah, but the truth is that the the nutrient value of that is so low. Vegetables don't have tons of no, nutrient value. No, I'm trying to pull that in. For, yeah. You know, no. No. For like, yeah, I agree vegans. with they've you. Got, they've got value, but they don't have a lot of nutrient necessarily value. Sure. They're not particularly high. Okay, potato. Potatoes, believe it or not, are pretty nutrient dense, high in carbohydrates. Got the energy there. They've got certain nutrients in there that oh, are, I mean, are I'm not down bad. With that. And I mean, you know, you can you can do okay eating a lot of potatoes with not a lot of other stuff. I know, uh, you know, the Irish have a why, why history. You, of, at me? <laughs> <laughs> you, you want, a, so you want a potato diet? I don't yeah. know about potato chip uh, diet, maybe. Because I, I said Irish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, he's <laughs> Irish spaghetti was. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wow. Uh, yeah. wow. Anyways, just took a racist turn yeah. real quick. <laughs> no, no, but, but potatoes, th those are kind kind of up there. Yeah, um, no, they're good. 
Yeah. For for other vegetables, I'm trying to think. Uh, you know what else would be? I good? mean, when you guys are, what's like a a, a staple plate, right? I, we, I mean, obviously, if you've listened to Mind Pump longer than freaking two months, you know that we we uh, you know advocate for rotating your foods, all foods, right? Mm-hmm. So never never once would you catch any of us eating the same plate. But what is like a staple plate uh, of food that like you would consume? Go, you go first, Justin. I mean, steak and, some... and like Brussels sprouts or, or asparagus or like something like uh, to complement it that way. Uh, and then potatoes, obviously, that's something for me that I, I get value from that when I work out in my performance. Yeah. Um, uh, carrots. Carrots are very nutrient dense, very high in the fat soluble, Man. you know, vitamin A. You don't like carrots? I'm not a carrot guy. Really? Not a fan. Yeah. I mean, I'll eat them, but I'm not a big fan. Yeah. Carrots are up there. Uh, kale, Brussels sprouts. But uh, honestly, this is true now. I'm not anti plant foods at all. I think they have value when combined with other foods. But if you look at them from a purely nutritional standpoint, like I just, I'm, I need to, I'm going to only eat one food and my body's not going to die or, or whether it's not going to be a plant food. It's going to be an animal source because yeah. it, it really does come with. So yeah. there, as far as nutrient density is concerned, it's mostly animal products. Yeah. yeah. At steak, rice, and spinach is like a, such a staple yeah, like rice meal. too. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I eat a, I eat a lot of rice, and uh, spinach is like probably one of my favorite vegetables to go to, and steak is by far one of the most nutrient dense foods. Yeah, there, so. I, I do. I feel my best if I have eggs every day, or egg yolks in particular, um, and one or two servings of uh, of red meat, either lamb or beef. Those are my two favorite sources fish I'll eat but I, I don't I mean the taste is fine it's just not as appealing to you me. don't eat it as much not as much what are you guys are you, so I eat a lot of chicken thighs too do you guys eat a lot of chicken thighs mm. I, I my like, kids love them yeah, yeah. I oh. prefer chicken thighs over chicken breast that's for sure oh I, I remember when like the I had that epiphany on like the, the when you started comparing protein fat calories everything between a thigh and a breast I'm like what do I why have I been eating this dry ass chicken breast for so long it's like yeah. the thighs are like as as nutrient dense almost as high as in protein Protein, taste a million times better. Like, what was I thinking? Like, yeah. I remember that was back. That you know that come from that come from the like low fat freaking uh, era when we first started. I could definitely eat more fish. I've been trying to inc- include that quite a bit more uh, as of late. Fish but, sticks, yeah, <laughs> with ketchup. <laughs> They're yummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're breaded and delicious. You mentioned just as like he's got a plate with just like five fish sticks. <laughs> the star, I mean, the star one. Just one block of cheese and like yeah. all like fish sticks. I ate fish today. Yeah, I ate fish. <laughs> Yay! Give me a give me a gold medal. <laughs> all right, our next question is from Sydney R. Green. Have you ever trained someone with body dysmorphia? How do you help people overcome it? I had a lot of people actually. Yeah, I, I've I've worked with a few people where it was uh, they they were being treated uh, for body dysmorphia. In yeah. fact, they got mm. sent to me by their therapist uh, to train them uh, because I was a uh, the therapist was my client, so they knew that you know I would be able to help them. I guess because of their experience with me, I had to help them develop a better relationship with exercise. One of the more effective things that I did with people with varying degrees of body and I say varying degrees because it's super common for some sort of body dysmorphia when you're in the gym working out and especially among my peers it's very common among personal trainers and fitness professionals don't to, you to think we, with don't you think we all have a little bit of this I do. I I, 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 th- do. I think it's more of a spectrum like I really feel like yeah yes, I would agree with that I really feel like almost every cuz let's be honest right like of all the you know hundreds and probably co- collectively thousands of people that we've trained, how many times has somebody came in and they're just like, "Hey, Adam, I, I want to train because I need to exercise and I want to be healthier." It's like that's such a small percentage. Most mm-hmm. people are driven in there because of the way they look. Yeah, because and they, that's the main motivation. Because they yeah. hate the way they look. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah. right? And, and and admittedly, they come mm-hmm. in. I hate this tire around my. I just can't stand my flabia. And they're like, they literally will use that that verbiage. So I think that. This is more now. There's, uh, it's so extreme with some people, right? That's why I said it's a spectrum that they're having a medical uh, condition and they're yeah. being treated for it. But I actually would argue that more there's a probably a higher percentage of people in the gym right now working out that actually suffer from some sort of body dysmorphia. I would, I would agree. I mean, we're we're constantly being, um, or or it's reinforced to us that the way our body looks, we're being marketed to is, that way. It's very important. It's yeah. like one of the most important things. You know, wisdom isn't that important. Intelligence isn't that important. It's like how we look. Um, it, that's very important. So we're constantly comparing ourselves to an ideal, and so it's it's quite common. 
one of the more effective strategies I would do as a trainer, well, first of all, I never directly treated body dysmorphia. I know when to stay in my lane and, and I always, especially if it was a bad case, would always work with the therapist. That was the person who focused directly on that. My goal as a trainer was to get the person to love exercise because it made them feel good, love exercise because they like the strength gains, they like the performance, um, they like the movement themselves, they enjoyed the workouts. I my goal was always to move them away from the, you know, falling in love with the visible changes from exercise. Like, oh, am I getting leaner? Am I, do I look any different? It was more like, wow, I'm, I added five pounds to the bar or I could do a full squat today. And so they really loved the performance and it just took their focus off of the body long enough or, or with enough uh, effectiveness to get them to really enjoy working out for some of its other qualities. Because when you're dealing with this uh, situation, it's very easy. Like, here's the deal. If you have body dysmorphia challenges and you go into working out with the wrong motivations, it'll make it worse. Mm. I've seen this many times. You can become very obsessed. Um, When you look at people who deal with uh, anorexia or bulimia, oftentimes what's, what's, uh, you know, combined with that is over-exercising. So if you go into it, the right motivation, like if you go into your workout thinking, you know, if let's say this is you, you acknowledge that you have body dysmorphia issues. Maybe you're seeing a therapist. So now you're going to the gym, and rather than thinking, I need to burn off calories, I need to change the way I look, you think, you know what, I, I haven't been kind to myself, so I'm going to go to the gym, and I'm going to take care of myself. I, I need to feel better. I like to, I want to move better. I want to feel um, stronger. I want to see how strong I can get. Like That's a good one because it's hard. It's really hard to get stronger if you're not feeding yourself enough. Now, on the mm. flip side, if you're dealing with a man with body dysmorphia, sometimes you get what they call bigorexia, which is the opposite, where the guy just wants to get bigger, doesn't care about uh, you know his health, uh, oftentimes takes anabolic steroids or eats too much food. I would have fell more closer into this category, in which case I would focus on performance as well, but it wouldn't be strength. It would be mobility, yeah. mobility and flexibility, because if you push strength with those guys – they can also go to. I, I love to focus on like a and, and here's the thing. So I under, if this is a trainer, I don't know if this is a trainer asking this question. So I totally understand this challenge because I remember how challenging this was early in because this dealt with this a ton. I remember how hard it was in the beginning versus how hard it, or how much easier it became later for me. Later on, when I built the confidence and experience as a trainer, I could tell a client like this like. Okay, like you know, regardless if they sat down in front of me and said, "Oh, I hate the way I look. I don't want this, or this," and I would be able to say, "Listen, do you you were referred by somebody to me like that? Do you trust that I'm going to take good care of you?" And I would get them to commit that they trust me, and they say, "Well, so this is what we're going to do. Like, I, I'm not going to have you get on the scale. We're not going to do these measurements. It's not what I want to do. Is I'm going to teach you something, and I just need you to trust me that I'm going to take care of the goals, the things that you want." But I want you to follow what I what I show you. Okay, and, the, and get that buy in first, and then the program would be focused around either strength or skills. Like I love to take yeah, someone yeah. and teach them like a Turkish get up. A tur- teaching a I great know, was, yeah, a, tr- a great Turkish get up could take months and months and months of training and focus. And it's it's fun to try and get somebody good at it. And what a feeling of accomplishment! Yeah, and it, and exactly. And then when you when they you watch somebody who can barely balance ten pounds over their head and do a cur- Turkish get up, all of a sudden be able to do that with a forty pound kettlebell or weight over their head and do it with beautiful form. And the whole focus was around that. As a byproduct, they will get stronger. They'll feel better. You know, and and then you can attach and you can show them like how they are making progress with their goals and disconnect yeah. it from the way they look. I'm so glad you brought that up. I- that's like falls right into what I was going to say. It's like, you know, I get somebody like that. They're very uh, physically motivated to change because they hate themselves. Like they're coming in with that type of energy. My favorite thing to do is to introduce them to unconventional tools and unconventional ways of training that sort of just flips the script. So, you know, in order to reframe how they think, think like this is all going to go in terms of their workouts and what, you know, muscle size and, or, you know, how much of this body fat we're going to lose or this or that. Like they're just focused on the actual thing that's right in front of them, learning like something like a mace bell and like how to swing it properly, like by just doing these things that actually do stimulate the muscle and it does promote 
uh, you know, fitness that we can build upon. Uh, I just found that like a, a much better way to at least start, you know, having them think differently about how this is all going to go. I yeah. thought it was interesting when I read about strong men like that took on apprentices. I think I brought this up before in the show one time and I can't remember where I read this, but I guess that, that this was like, uh, like the standard before, like, let's say Justin is a strong man and I want to work underneath and I want to learn from him. And he's this great trainer. And he goes, all right, well, you have to first be able to do a Turkish get up with a hundred pounds. And so I would have to acquire that skill. So think of that as a trainer who's getting somebody who's so focused on their body and say like, okay, don't worry, we're going to get to all those things. But the fir- the foundation is we first have got to achieve whatever. And you give them like a strength goal or mm-hmm. a skill goal that you want to focus on. And then don't worry, we're going to do all those things. And it's great because it kind of distracts them from you know their body and changing. But what you know as a trainer that they're, that's all going to come as as they're focusing on that, yeah. but you're taking their mind off of the way they look. Yeah, well, body obsession, um, you know, exercise is a great way to either make body obsession better or worse. Mm-hmm. It really is. It all depends on how you enter into it. If you're working out because you hate yourself, you hate your body, you hate the way you look, it's going to make your body image and body obsession much worse. If you go into it with the mindset that you really want to care for yourself, number one, because you deserve to be cared for, um, you are a human being and you deserve to be cared for, and number two, because you acknowledge that maybe you weren't doing that before, but now is the time. So now I'm empathetic. Okay, I, I, I didn't do it before. This time I'm going to do it. And if you enter into exercise that way, then it makes things so much better. But it is a very powerful tool and it's all in how you use it, and it can definitely push you in one way or the other. It all starts with your intention going into it. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video and audio. If you love listening to the podcast, come watch us also on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us all on Instagram. We post a lot of cool stuff, some funny stuff, and some behind-the-scenes stuff. You can find Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. You can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam and Justin, your favorite host at Mind Pump Justin. How do you feel, dude? Are you, uh, you know, by the, first of all, so the audience doesn't know this, like you didn't tell us, uh, one, you you chose not to uh, uh, know what the sex was until uh, he was born. That's right. You also didn't share with us the name that you were going to choose. So when you sent over, not only you had a boy, but you also named.